Dave, tell me your backstory, because you're one of the guys that essentially pioneered the biohacking movement, unless I just don't know about everything that came beforehand, which is possible, but I know that in the beginning, the on-ramp was Bulletproof Executive. I don't even know if you still have that brand. And yep. then a handful of other people who were doing things that I can't even remember. And then suddenly I took a nap and woke up and Bulletproof Coffee was all over the world. <laughs> well, what happened is I spent 20 years doing uh, research in a nonprofit for anti-aging. Talking with all these functional medicine people and other experts in nutrition. And I realized there's a whole bunch of bodybuilders over here and pro athletes over here and Navy SEALs over here and astronaut recovery people here and neurologists and none of them talk. Mm -hmm. And I wanted full control my bio, of my own biology and I said, we've got to have a name for this. So I came up with this name, Biohacking, and I wrote it in my first blog post. I made this infographic about it and I didn't trademark the name. And I said, you know, I want this to be a community. I trademarked Bulletproof and Bulletproof Executives. That's my company and it's in the biohacking field. Started the first biohacking conference six years ago. 100 people show up. Mm -hmm. And last year we had, I think, about 3,000 people, maybe a little bit under 3,000, 2,800 or something. Uh, and we're having our next biohacking conference in uh, April 5th in LA. And what happened is this year, Miriam Webster's added biohacking to the dictionary. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm in the definition too, which is oh, crazy. Oh, really? Oh, that's pretty yeah. awesome. So they're calling me, like on whatever that was, Fox News or something on the TV, like the father of biohacking, which is. Uh, which is really cool. I've never been in a dictionary before. Yeah, you know, you can make the Forbes list, but you really can't really... <laughs> making the dictionary is even harder. I was, <laughs> that, that was kind of a surreal moment. Yeah. Somebody texted me, like, did you see this? I'm like, no, it's awesome. Yeah. So, so the idea is, is you can change the environment around you and inside of you to get control of your own biology. The first use of biohacking was in 92, but it was more about inserting jellyfish genes into your cat so it'll glow and things like that. Uh, so there's, also cool, yeah, though. Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah when I are you going to try that on yourself? I, I was going to do that like to my sister when I was young, but yeah. it didn't work. It didn't work. You I, tried it I and just it didn't colored, work? I just colored her with yellow markers, but I was four, so fair, it was okay. Fair, fair. But she still glowed, at least for a little while. <laughs> I remember when I was taking those glow sticks as a kid that you'd yes. get on Halloween, and I would pour them all over myself, and I'd be like, look, I'm glowing, and my mom would freak out, because who knows what's in those things. <laughs> exactly. Man. There's no way. Like, it's in a thick plastic shell, because you don't want your kid to chew it open. Right. Um, but I managed. I am determined. Yep. I've bathed myself in that stuff more times than I should have. Yeah, absolutely. I can imagine. I don't think that counts as biohacking, but it was preliminary. No, I mean, it, it, might, be, it might be the opposite <laughs> in a lot of ways. You also had to lose a bunch of weight and everything, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, how did you originally get into this? I know it was, was not because you're like, I'm so healthy. I'll yeah. be even healthier. It was sort of the opposite. Yeah. I had arthritis diagnosed when I was 14 in my knees. Is that genetic then? No. Uh, it's probably environmental. And... No one, knew, no one knew what it was at the time. I was obese. I hit 300 pounds when I was about 23. Uh, and 300 pounds. 300 pounds. How much, for people who are watching us, do you mind if I ask how much you weigh now? I weigh 203 pounds right now, okay. and I'm 9.6% body fat, and I have 19.4 pounds of fat on my body. So you used to have like 119.4, give or take. It, it's hard to know if it was, give or take. It's hard to know how much of that was inflammation versus fat. Like okay. that's how much weight I lost. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure that a lot of it was inflammation. But I also, I was a 46 inch waist. I'm a 33 inch waist now. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually um, lower than I was as a junior in high school. Wow. Uh, which is phenomenal. I'm yeah. 45, not bad. right? Not bad. And I also, I, I got other quote diseases of aging. So I'm 26, working in Silicon Valley. I made $6 million when I was 26. It was at the company that held Google's first server. I was a co-founder of, of a part of that company. And we ended up you know, starting the data center and cloud computing business. And I started getting brain fog to the point I bought disability insurance because I wouldn't hire myself because I couldn't remember anything. Oh man, and you were, what, were you coding? Or I, I, was, you I was more of an architect. I ended up okay. running a program for the University of California to teach engineers how to build the internet. So I was like, how, how should it work? How must it work? So I was yeah. a coder originally, but then I became like a technology architect kind of guy. Probably helps to know how to remember things it, and it keep was, things straight in your head at it, that point. It was terrifying actually. And also my emotions would just get all over the place. Uh, and then I said, something's wrong. And, and I said, I'm gonna just exercise. I'm gonna lose the weight no matter what. I've had a couple knee surgeries by then, and I worked out an hour and a half a day, six days a week, and after a year, actually That's 18 months of that, I didn't lose any weight. I could max all the machines, and I realized I eat less than all my friends, and I work out more than all my friends, and I'm fatter than all my friends, 
and I, I thought oh, it's a moral failing. I should eat less lettuce leaves or something. Sure. And what it was was I was eating the wrong stuff, and there were environmental factors that are involved. And I fired my doctor when he told me vitamin C would kill me and that maybe I should lose weight. When I told him what I did, he just looked at me like he knew I was lying. I was clearly leaving just stuff in Snickers bars oh, down. Right. And it's very common. Doctors are taught this. And I'm like, okay, no one's going to help me. I'm just going to hack this. And fortunately, I am a computer hacker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I stayed up every night, and I would just read PubMed, and I would... Take, by the way, I lost my $6 million two years after I made it, so I haven't... Oh, yeah. classic Silicon Valley yeah, story. Yeah, it, it was a great couple of years, yeah. but I would just buy anything I thought would help. And I, I dug really deep, and I learned about electrical currents on the body, and the first infrared light for the brain almost 20 years ago, EEG neurofeedback, and then I started running an anti-aging nonprofit group that let me talk to people three times my age who were reversing the symptoms I had. I was diagnosed with high risk of stroke and heart attack and pre-diabetes before I was 30. Wow, you were super unhealthy. I was Is, trash. Are there people in your family that are that unhealthy or? Mm, no, I mean, it, my mom's side of the family isn't particularly healthy. There's a lot of autoimmunity. Because how oh. did you get there? You know, how well, did you get that unhealthy stress and what else? Stress is probably a part of it, but it was a lot of it environmental stress. So there, there's two big factors. One of them is if you're sympathetic dominant uh, or you have a strong fight or flight response, basically if you're anxious. Yeah. And for me, we trace that back. I know exactly where that came from. It comes from two places. If it's common in entrepreneurs. Um, the most common one is if you're bullied. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> like, you're sign like, up any computer guy for well, that one. Pretty much. I mean, we go to mastermind talks with Jason or, or any of these big entrepreneur conferences. You ask around. The, everyone in the room was bullied. Like, yeah. It's just how it works. And then you're like, i got to prove something. So I had some of that. And also, I was born with the umbilical cord wrapped around my neck. Oh, I've, I've heard of a lot of people. Actually. Yeah. And I've, I actually got to work with the woman who invented, uh, for 30 years she's run the, the group on this. She didn't invent it, but she, she documented and progressed the science on pre- and perinatal trauma. So I came into the world ready to kill, thinking someone was trying to kill me, and I never stopped. Right? Gotcha. And it also affected my ability to make connections with other people because you're like, I'm alone, like nothing's safe. Sure. And I ditched all that in my like early 30s. I, I did a lot of personal development work. So that was a part of it. But the biggest part, I grew up in a basement that had had a water leak and there was toxic mold in the basement. So in addition to all this weird stuff, autoimmunity, I would have nosebleeds every day, I had rashes and asthma, and just all this weird stuff. And now that I've done a documentary on toxic mold, I've interviewed all, mm -hmm. all the top experts and started a company that helps to solve that problem and even eliminated mold in the Bulletproof coffee beans. Um, I understand exactly the biology of this stuff. And so what happened to me is I got Hashimoto's, which is a thyroid condition. A lot of entrepreneurs have it. Yeah, it's so funny. I was just going to say, I know like this seems to be the thing that everyone is either being diagnosed with yeah. now and that it's because they didn't know how to find it before or it's more common or Here, it's just a bias, confirmation bias on my part. I love it that you said that though because I interviewed a ton of people on my show and wrote a book called Game Changers that's just coming out. And one of the rules, this, these are uh, 46 laws uh, based on um, my interview and just my love of Robert Greene's work. I know mm -hmm. you just interviewed Robert Greene. Right? Yeah. Uh, so a, a hero of mine. And this idea that what do all of these high performers do um, who I've had on, on the show uh, and you know, some of the mutual, you know, mutual friends, people who have been on, on your show. Uh, but I asked them these, these questions. And one of the things that came out of it is that, uh, I'm not going to paraphrase the law exactly right from, yeah, from okay. memory because there's 46 of them, but the idea is, is that if you burn the candle at both ends, you don't get that back. And what happens as entrepreneurs or just high stress people, when you hit a certain emotional or work stress thing and you don't sleep and you're flying all over the place and even if you're over exercising and especially with environmental insults like that. So my entire life. Well, Go yeah, on. this is like endemic. <laughs> yeah. You, once you hit that wall and then you get a little car accident or you get a virus or mm. some or you know a, a family member dies you, another stressor it pushes you over and then autoimmunity turns on so people like you and me we're more likely to have our immune system start attacking our body and the first thing that gets attacked is your thyroid quite often why is that the case i i, I, I don't know why the thyroid yeah. is I, I think we know why your immune system does that but the deal here is is really straightforward from talking to all these people and, and just having to force myself to do the thinking to structure it in the book is that you can push really hard and then recover. And you push hard and recover. And what I did, like I'll just turn the volume all the way up and mm -hmm. just leave it there. Like, just, just hold the accelerator to the floor. Why I don't you ever use the recover, brakes? Recover, I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'll just. I'm young. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'll just push harder. It's, it's it's a willpower thing. And so what you end up doing is you permanently put the brakes on. Once you start doing that, all the energy that should go into repairing your cells goes into attacking your cells, and you can undo a lot of that. 
and I've managed to turn off my Hashimoto's antibodies. But here's the deal, just as a, a thing for high performers, the best people in the world, they push really hard and then they recover like maniacs and they push hard, they recover. And the ones who are running from something, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have to prove I'm good enough, I have to run away from failure, the way I made my six million and lost my six million with that kind of a mindset, that's what breaks you. And that was a part of my issue. So I had a chemical assault from the toxic mold that was in my bedroom. And I had emotional stress. And then you know you go to work, you're like, I'm gonna push really hard. And then you go through a bad breakup and things like that. And all of a sudden your body just starts to betray you. Why does, why do we have autoimmune? I never quite understood this. It doesn't, there's nothing readily coming to me that says, so I'm really stressed out, therefore my body should attack itself. Like what's, <laughs> what is the process that's happening here? I realize There's, you're not a doctor, but you know all about well, this. I, I mean, I, I, I'm a New York Times science yeah. author at least, yeah. so I have a good... Yeah, you should have a good understanding yeah, of this. I, I have not written about the immune system specifically, more about mitochondria, which are the power plants in the cells. My, sure. my last big book was I remember that was from sixth grade, this. biology. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. These guys, they're ancient bacteria that sense the environment around you, and they're trying to figure out is this a stressful situation or is this not? And they're doing it on a cell by cell basis. And that can roll up into, they're interpreting stress that maybe you wouldn't think of as stress, but they already got the signal before you had a chance to think gotcha. about it. Okay. And that's a, definitely a part of it because they're the ones that are the first line responders. And we also know based on the work of a doctor named Candace Pert. She's a researcher who's passed away who discovered the opioid receptor in our brain. So a very celebrated figure mm -hmm in science, and she went from this hardcore Western rationalist approach to more of a very balanced Eastern and Western approach, and she actually showed in her work called The Molecules of Emotion that your immune system has a memory of its own. And what tends to happen is that in the case of, let's say, a toxic mold, it creates compounds that cause your white blood cells, your immune system, to get hyper-aggressive and it oftentimes sensitizes your white blood cells to the proteins that line, say, your thyroid or very commonly your nerve sheet, called the a myelin, myelin binding sheet. protein, yeah. yeah. And, and so because these are molecular mimics, you get that. And it's also well shown that if you learn to meditate, if you relax, you increase your heart rate variability, you, you learn how to not just think you're chilling, but actually chill, mm -hmm. that it reduces inflammation in the immune system. The immune system is kind of a mimic of what's going on inside our brain, but the exact mechanisms of autoimmunity, once we crack that, it's going to change the world. In fact, last weekend, I was at the XPRIZE Visioneering Summit with Peter Diamandis, and one of the big X Prizes that I think got nominated for next year was funding you know, a, a 10 or $20 million prize specifically to deal with autoimmunity. I believe the number one cause of autoimmunity is environmental toxic mold, because I've seen it over and over, and it's such an endemic problem, and the number two cause is it's either hate or stress. <laughs> they well, go together. Yeah, they do it, go together. It, it's a, psych, it's a, a, psych, a psychological, emotional, spiritual thing that's part of it. I know you've spent like a million bucks just, uh, I was gonna insert a really crude joke here, but I won't. <laughs> Messing with your own biology and biohacking yourself over the last 20 years. And I think that's pretty fascinating because a, a lot of people who are in this field, they will take that sample size of one and then say, here's all this stuff we're gonna do. Luckily, your sample size seems to be enormous right now because I just got back from Australia and every cafe had bulletproof yeah. coffee. Some of them are real. <laughs> yeah, I was like, is it really the same beans? And then I, they're just like, no, we just take you know whatever coffee yeah. and then we throw some some ghee in it or some just butter and, and that's it. Bulletproof is available in Australia, but not widely. And here's the deal. I thought about this when I first started this. Anytime you put butter in your coffee instead of milk, you are getting more benefits from your coffee than milk because milk steals antioxidants from coffee. So even if everyone in the world switches to butter in moldy coffee, the world is still better off. But it's not bulletproof, don't call it that. It's called butter coffee. Sure, sure, yeah, <laughs> you can try that. But I think it, the, prob the problem slash the best thing is, look, if you invented tissue paper and you called it Kleenex and then I grabbed a Costco brand and I say it's a Kleenex, it's, it's, not, it's not the official thing, but like when you're brand has made it that far into what do you call it the it, public conscience it, it's an honor when it's people want to cool. copy you yeah, yeah. but it, we, we send a lot of letters to make sure the trademark is well protected yeah yeah you can <laughs> i mean i think that that ship has probably sailed in some countries though especially oh, we have global trademarks but yeah? it's just enforcement in different countries you do it different levels you could go broke and trying to enforce it yeah yeah, yeah. i think uh, it's it's probably it, it's better for your brand to be recognizable than to go after the food cart at the mall I, in Australia. I got the best photo from a remote town in India. 
and there's a little handmade sign, bulletproof coffee. Oh, it was nice. called just Guy and whatever coffee. Sure. It was not bulletproof coffee. And I don't think we can find that guy to send him a warning letter, no. letter and we wouldn't. But I, I would <laughs> say, if you're thinking about putting coffee in your cafe, we'll happily sell you the beans that are lab tested for mold toxins, yeah. brain octane, which is required. It's not MCT oil, it's different and better. And we'll get you some grass fed butter, that's easy. Nice. Well, okay, look, Silicon Valley's inhaling bulletproof coffee, branded or not. David Beckham had it or something, I think. I saw that somewhere online. I think there was something on social about that. And uh, Hollywood loves it. And it sort of spans the the gamut of people that... It, it went beyond the laughter curtain of why the hell are you putting butter in your coffee. It, it went pretty fast, yeah. actually. Uh, and this is a lesson for entrepreneurs listening, and it's the opposite of what they taught me uh, at business school. I went to Wharton. Yeah. Uh, same, uh, same school as Trump. And uh, Adam Grant. Yeah. <laughs> so in your defense, Adam Grant went there too. A lot, well, I, a lot of good people went there. A lot of great people on I, both sides. I think it's a fantastic school. The uh, The only issue is they didn't have a built-in ethics program when I went there. It was the only school they didn't, so we were giving them a hard time about it. I think they've since remedied that. But they taught us in one class, it's cheaper to spend a dollar telling people your product is good than it is making the product good. Oh, that's... Uh depressing it's so a common business school teaching and let's highlight that though one yeah. more time it's cheaper to spend a dollar telling people your product is good than to spend that dollar actually making the yeah. product good and, and i i fundamentally believe that's unethical and i also yeah. believe people are smart enough to buy what works and having an efficacious product a product that actually does what you say it can do that you can feel and see a difference so the reason Bulletproof took off wasn't the, the brand, although I think it's a pretty awesome name. It is a great name. I've uh, yeah. thought about stealing it many times, but <laughs> I like you too much to do that. Thank you and for I your don't integrity. Like it sued. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, but the, uh, the, the honest truth is, is that people try it and they go, I thought it was BS, but I actually noticed a difference in how I felt. I think I want to feel this way more. And then they tell their friends because they want to share something that matters. And that's what made it spread. Yeah. It, it was you know, I probably could have called it, you know, Buttercup or something. And, Oof, yeah. yeah. Maybe it wouldn't have been as cool to refer, yeah. though. To the, it w wouldn't have done as well in the bro culture. Yeah, at, I think you're right. Butter, Buttercup. I know, I, rem I remember in the 90s, there was this, you might remember this, it was like an Arctic expedition. The guys were walking to the North Pole mm -hmm. or something like that. And I remember there was this 900 number. Remember those? Oh, yeah, I remember 900 updates. numbers. So my friend was at, we were all at some kid's house and we're like, let's call this 900 number because it was a bad thing to do. Yeah. And we'll get updates on the Arctic expedition. So we called and they were like, these guys are hiking and here's where they are. They're 100 miles north of this. And every day they put butter in their coffee. And we were like, that's so disgusting. In the 90s? Yeah. But I think they just needed the calories. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. like, this helps us absorb. I think wow. they were just starving. Yeah. And they needed the, the densest thing they could carry, which is pure fat yeah so they just put that in their coffee it's true settlers yeah. would carry butter and bacon fat uh, or tallow yeah. and like some sort of carbs and that was about it yeah, yeah. it was because these guys are on foot i mean there's yeah. not a whole lot they could do and so then when i heard about bulletproof i was like they kind of had this but it was a little different and you only needed it when you were it, shivering so bad that you needed 5,000 calories, 7,000 calories a day. It's kind of funny. Uh, the idea for Bulletproof Coffee came to me because I'd exhausted the Western medicine stuff and I knew I still wasn't happy. And I believe that everybody fundamentally wants to be happy. I was just willing to literally go to the ends of the earth for this. So when I tried all the stuff that was supposed to work and didn't, I said, all right, I'm going to go learn meditation from the masters. So I took off for Tibet. Mm -hmm. And I spent about three months in, in Nepal and Tibet. I went to monasteries, meditated, things like that. And I went to Mount Kailash, which is remote western Tibet, middle of nowhere, five days in a four-wheel drive to get there. And Five days in a four-wheel drive like to get there? Ten hours a day, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That does not... There's no, no way to get there on a plane or anything? No, it, this is one of the most remote parts of the world. Wow. And it's where, basically, the Mount Olympus of Buddhism and Hinduism. So this is where the gods live on this mountain. No one's ever climbed the mountain. And you go and you walk a 26-mile circuit at 18,000 feet elevation around it, sort of like to honor the mountain. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go do this, just because it's one of the things that no yeah. one's ever done. Bucket list. Well, no one from the West. It turns out a lot of people go there in the middle of summer from India and Tibet. It's, it's one of those, like, going to Mecca sort of things. So I said, all right, I'm going to try this. But I got there two months late, and it was 10 degrees below zero, and there's 30 mile an hour winds, and there's only eight people in these little guest houses. You can call them the mud huts on the sure. side. And I'm feeling wrecked because of the elevation, and it's cold, and I'm not all the way recovered the way I am now. And this little Tibetan woman, I saw a picture of her. She gives me yak butter tea, and, and I drank it, and was like, 
game on. Yeah. Like I feel so much better and it just stuck in my head. I, I made a habit of noting when I felt amazing or when I felt crappy so I could just find the variables that caused it. And I drank a lot more of that. And when I came home, I decided, all right, I'm gonna start experimenting. I ended up doing the mold-free coffee, uh, grass-fed butter, because I tested regular butter, it doesn't work, and I added the brain octane from the knowledge I had from the anti-aging group. But something else happened in Tibet that I haven't talked about very much. Mm -hmm. I descended 7,500 vertical feet in one day, and I completely jacked up my knees. So I already had arthritis. So, already so you're literally like walking down Walking down stairs okay. for you know a mile and a half vertical or something. Oh, man. It, it was, so I, I, for five days, could not walk, even with two poles. I, I could barely Just cross the street. massive swelling and yeah, inflammation. And, and yeah, harsh pain. So we're driving to Tibet, and I really wanted to go on this walk, but I wasn't going to be able to do it. So we stopped at this little mud building on the side of the road, and I asked a Chinese guy on the bus, and you could read the menu. Hey, what does it say? And he read everything. I'm looking for collagen. I know I need collagen in my joints. That's what they're made out of, just to repair them. There's only one menu item that will fit the bill. It was pig's ears. Oh, delicious, by the way. I got a bowl yeah. of cold boiled pig's ears. It was horrible. Really? They're kind of good if they're done right. Uh, well, I know you're talking to like the one guy who's had bowls of pig's ears and I'm like, <laughs> you just haven't had pig's ears, buddy. You know, I imagine they could be good. This yeah. was a roadside without refrigeration yeah, in the middle yeah. of nowhere. Maybe, like, it was brutal. Maybe and skip I, the points. I dipped them in hot soup so, and they're really chewy. Ooh. But the next day, my knees were 50% yeah. better. I just needed the materials. And like, I'm not putting pig's ears in my coffee. So the reason you see collagen... That's my new business idea. Pig, pig's oh, ears man. coffee, too, you're all over it. I've got, it's like, yeah, there's, yeah. there's, a, there's a brand bacon, here. Bacon-proof coffee. Bacon-proof bacon, bacon -proof coffee, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, except it's, it's not quite bacon. It's, uh, yeah, I'll it, make it Latin it, so it sounds fancy. Baconoid. Yeah, baconoid. Uh, so what I ended up doing when I came back is, I said, all right, um, I know from the anti-aging stuff what collagen does biochemically. Uh, I'm going to start using it as a performance supplement. And the reason you see collagen everywhere right now, it's all because Bulletproof put collagen on the map. So the original posts about biohacking were, hey, the type of fat, this weird brain octane stuff, this butter in coffee, the, the purity of the coffee, uh, and collagen protein, and those things help me to re-sculpt my body. Like these are fundamental technologies that were missing from the story. And it's that sort of stuff where you just notice one thing in the environment and then you say, wait, why? And then you dig in, you understand the science, and then you build a product out of it. 48 million cups, and I hate to harp on the coffee, but it's really, this is kind of like the flagship product. I know you have a million other things, oh, yeah, but yeah. I, I am curious, because 48 million cups of Bulletproof coffee oh, that was, was a like long the, time the ago. guesstimate. Oh, really? That was a long time ago? Try so it's probably like 150 million now. You know that. Yep. Yeah, because I, I saw that in The Guardian, mm -hmm. and it was like last year, but the article's so from... It was like 2014 yeah, or something. I think yeah. it was 2016, okay. yeah. And, but I was just thinking, those poor yaks, right? They're getting milked raw. <laughs> but yeah, All six of them. Right. <laughs> right. Why, why does it matter... Why does it matter where the butter comes from? Because I think, and I don't want to get too into the weeds on this, but I found that interesting because then it's not just the fat, right? Because no. you can get fat anywhere. Yeah, it, it turns out there's super toxic fats. There's fats that do all sorts of different things. So you can't say fat's good or bad for you. Mm -hmm. um, it depends exactly which fat. And when I came back, I just bought some butter. and It was organic butter. It wasn't grass-fed. And some tea, and I blended it. It just tasted bad and didn't make me feel good. And I thought, what the heck? So I ended up trying all these different teas, $100 an ounce tea kind of things, all these different things, no difference. So then I went to the gourmet store, I had 24 different kinds of butter, and I just tested them all. And I said, wait, these two work, and those are the grass-fed butter. And I said, okay, it feels different if you use grass-fed butter. So I standardized on that. And this was just a process of experimentation and elimination. And then I tried coconut oil and coconut milk, and then I tried MCT oil, which is four different kinds of fat mm -hmm. all mixed together, one of which doesn't do anything biologically compared to the others. And I ended up, after trial and error, came up with the one of the four kinds of MCT that's brain octane oil. That was the one that you could feel the kick. It had the most effect. Three years after I launched that, UC San Diego came out with a study that shows it's four times more ketogenic. It causes ketones to rise in the body, even if you had carbs, four times more than coconut oil and twice as much as the MCT oils that even work and probably three times more than plain old MCT, including all the, the junk stuff that, that you can buy that doesn't raise ketones at all. I want to switch uh, gears a little yeah. to the brain stuff because I, I actually uh, I got a little sidetracked on the coffee because I'm interested yeah. in it. But the brain kryptonite mm -hmm. and some of the things from some of the ideas from Headstrong are really interesting because there's a lot of people that think they're eating right, myself included. I mean, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I think I'm eating right sometimes. But 
a lot of entrepreneurs, they complain, oh, I slow down a lot or I have brain fog or maybe I'm burning out. And it seems like that's probably true. A lot of us are overworked, but I think a lot of us are getting the wrong kind of fuel or we're in environments where things aren't so good. And I know for me, one weird observation that I have is, let's say you're wearing way too much cheap cologne and we're on oh, an airplane. Yeah. I, it, not only am I cranky, you can ask anyone who's been close to me for any amount of years, but I can't do, I, I either get ravenously hungry, but yeah. I'm craving junk food and or I can't sit down and do a task. And yeah. I thought I was just getting distracted by the no. smell, but there's something else going on. It's biochemical. Yeah, I, I've gone through phases of my life where I had the same problem yeah. and it comes and goes. And that is a, a toxin effect. And the reason you're getting the sugar craving like that is your cells are freaking out. They're, they're interpreting that as a toxic assault, which frankly it is. That stuff is endocrine disrupting, it's yeah. bad for you. But when that response happens, they're sending out an emergency signal and they're saying, make a lot of energy, like fight or flight gets triggered. You don't have the energy there, eat sugar. You gotta eat have sugar, sugar right yeah. now. And it turns out if you wanna nail that, when it first happens, what you can do is you can actually have two packets of sugar, so just a couple bites of something with sugar. Um, coffee helps a lot. And there's two different, or three different things that I'll take if that happens. Uh, one of them is called Keto Prime. And yes, these are supplements I make. I'm not trying to sell them. I'm just, yeah. like, I make them for a reason is okay. what I'm saying. Keto Prime makes it so your cells can make energy more easily. I make another supplement called Unfair Advantage. It's a little ampule you squeeze oh, out I've had time. that before. Yeah. That stuff in that situation, the cell's like, oh, I needed that. These are building blocks for energy. And so the energy demand in your brain just went way through the roof. Mm -hmm. So you're like, okay, here's a little bit of sugar. You can burn it. And here's some stuff that's going to make it so that it burns more smoothly. Uh, and then, of course, uh, brain octane works. And there's a supplement I also make called glutathione, which is the primary mm -hmm. detoxing antioxidant. So you can stack all those up. And then what would have been a, you know, I'm zombified, my eyes are rolled back in my head, and I'm cranky. Mm -hmm. And it turns into, okay, I'm back. And I went from times in my life where that would happen and I'd just be down for the count for like the whole day, Yeah. right? And now I generally recover within a few minutes if I just hit it with the right stack. And it is an energetic thing in the cells and that's now hackable. Well, I like the idea that coffee helps as well. Although usually I just want to pour it on the person that's wearing all the cologne. It's, it's sometimes really helpful mm -hmm. because it washes the cologne right off. It's scalding hot I, temperatures. I was, I was in an Uber car this morning and... Oh, I, the air fresheners? I always I, get it. I, I gotta get I, out. I just ask him. I'd say, could you could you toss those in the glove box? Mm -hmm. And then that quiet. Like, seriously? But this was a guy wearing so much cologne. And it was an Uber. I, I'd go for the whatever the select ones are because they usually don't have all the crap in the car. The guy was wearing so much cologne, I just rolled the windows down and kind of hang, hung out the window. It's the worst. Yeah, it's, it's gross. It's the worst. Yeah, that's, that's how I knew that something was wrong because I got in an Uber once and I was fine, I was really happy, I was talking to my wife on the phone, and I got in the Uber and I immediately got ravenously and kind of uh, like danger zone level of hunger and cr yeah. hangry, yeah. hangry. Yeah. Hangry is the right word. Yeah, I got yeah. hangry, but it was immediate, and I said, hey man, can you take out the air fresheners? And he goes, sure, and he pulled over to the side of the highway, which is not what I intended for him to do, and he reached in, you know those drink holders on the side of the car? Yeah. He reached in on one side with his hand and pulled out seven cube air fresheners and then reached in the other side and pulled out seven more Jeez. in each door. And then he threw them in the glove box and slammed the glove box shut. And I was like, you have like 30 air fresheners in this car. And you know what that does to the driver? That stuff mimics estrogen in the body. It disrupts all kinds of things, including your thyroid. You want to talk about Hashimoto's and thyroid dysfunction? Synthetic fragrances do that. Those things should be banned. Why does that, what's going on there? I didn't know that you could inhale something and it would trigger that much. Like, like smoke? Uh, I mean, smoke for sure, <laughs> yeah, okay. Now that you put it that way, it all it, makes inhalation sense. Inhalation is a very powerful inhalation, delivery system. Yeah, I, I believe in college I experimented with the inhalation administ administering But if you eat things. it, it doesn't hit as hard, yeah, right? Yes, yeah, it just takes longer. Or so I've heard. That's right, that's right, so, so I've heard. Good point. Well, I'm going to recover from that somehow. Um, <laughs> but, but let's go back to yeah. just being an entrepreneur on that. Sure. So you're cruising along, you're trying to get stuff done. Something that you didn't choose like that whacks you over the head. And now you're still, because you're a good person, you're, you're going to succeed. You're going to grit your teeth. You're going to apply willpower. Willpower still uses the electricity like everything else. But your electricity just got stolen. Right. So right. now you're pushing, but the accelerator is all the way to the floor. You're not going faster. You're slowing down. And what are you going to do? You're going to get angry. It, it's yeah. natural. So it's our responsibility, especially as entrepreneurs, especially if you have a team working for you. Your energy state is reflected in your company. 
This is something that I've learned. I spent a huge amount of time meditating with electrodes on my head and stuff like that because if I wanted to be able to grow bulletproof that I wanted to, I have to have my shit together. Yeah. Right. And that means that if something happens in the world around me that makes me weak, I've got to have a, a countermeasure, uh, or I've got to be able to just remain calm. And it's a lot easier to remain calm when you have enough energy. It's hard to remain calm when you're crashing. So I avoid the crashes and you eliminate toxins or just remove some of them from your environment. You eat so your blood sugar doesn't crash. You get background ketones by putting brain octane and stuff in your food or in your coffee, whatever. Uh, and all of a sudden you have stable energy and that means when you need to make a decision to apply willpower, you have more resilience. And resilience is what makes an entrepreneur able to succeed at the end of the day and stops you from yelling at your assistant or your spouse or all that. It's all about the brain. That's why my first yeah. first book was, you know, what do you eat to feel good and look good and not spend a lot of time worrying about it? The second book was, what do you do to make your brain work way way more often and longer and better than it normally does? Because that's what I need. These are like my own, yeah. my own precious things. Your own, your own yeah. issues as well. And, yeah. and I think one of the chief problems that I had with all this stuff initially was, look, caveman or whatever, or even 100 years ago, 50 years ago, we didn't have all these different oils and all those different things we were putting in. But upon further reflection, we also weren't working 16 hours a day, seven days a week, and sitting in front of computer screens yeah. and talking on phones and bathing in blue light, which we'll get into in a second. Yeah. And all the, a lot of things were different back then that we still suffered consequences, didn't know what they were, why they were happening, but now it's it's much more. The, the basic intense. rule is this. If you want to get all of your nutrients from your food, make sure you get all of your toxins from Mother Nature. Like try to do that while living on the planet. You cannot do it no matter where you are. Like there's glyphosate at the North Pole at this point. Right? So we are now under a, a higher load biologically on a subcellular level than we ever have and not to mention all the social media and stuff like that. So of course, if you're going to be able to outperform in a harder to perform an environment, you might want to modify your fuel source. Sure. It just makes sense. Let's talk about blue light because this is something that actually changed my life quite a bit recently, both using it appropriately and getting rid of it. Oh, wow. A friend of mine, I, I can't remember why we went to, I think we went to China, my wife and I, and a friend said, hey, you know, how's your jet lag? And I said, it's miserable. They said, order this light off Amazon. So we did, and we turned it on in the morning, and it was really, really effective. Like a blue-green light? It or? was a, some sort of blue Yeah, disc. Phil, Phillips makes yes. one, and there's some glasses called Recharger that do that. It, re it really worked yeah, well. And I does. thought, this is really cool. And then I heard something from guys like you and other friends where at night I was like, wow, I'm having trouble falling asleep. I'll just look at my phone for three hours. And I just felt like I could not go to sleep. And I was, I'm pretty good at falling asleep. So I was yeah. wondering what was going on. It's just some sort of lifestyle change, some sort of trigger. And then I want to say you or someone else had given me a pair of blue blockers. Was it the true dark ones, the, the dark ones? This is a long time okay, ago. Okay, so like 15 years ago, I started doing blue blockers, but mm. it's progressed since then. They okay. actually looked kind of like what an old lady wears. Yeah, the UVX ones. Yeah. By the way, for people, these are eight bucks online. Yeah. You, you can get blue blockers, but if you block all the blue, you're not going to like what happens during the day. And if you block all the blue, it doesn't work all the way at night either. Right. That's that's the problem. I was overdoing it during the day and underdoing it at night. Yeah, there were some issues with what I was doing, definitely. But I'll tell you, once I started wearing these things, even just in the hour and a half, two hours of watching TV, which yeah. I don't really do anymore, which is, I didn't realize, a massive source of unhealthy blue light, I would lay down. I would actually either fall asleep while we were watching TV or I would lay down and immediately conk out. And Jen's like, wow, you you must be so tired now. And I'm like, I've always been as tired I just don't want to keep watching TV for four hours when I watch for 30 minutes and I'm starting to nod off. Yeah. And the goggle, the blue light glasses or goggles or whatever, depending on my day, makes all the difference. And I've, I've noticed oh. even, even little things like uh, I have an air purifier yeah. in our room and there's a blue light on it. It's you have to tape it over. literally an LED. Okay. I, I have to tell you. This thing keeps me awake all okay. freaking night until I taped it over. So I got so tired of this. Um, one of the companies I started is called True Dark, and I'm wearing a pair of them right now. I have a case of those in my house right uh, now. Do you have the sleep ones? I have. Is, are those the, the, the red dark, ones dark that red are ones? like goggly yeah, the, red? Yeah, those ones are patented those. spectral filters. There's four of those, four different spectrums inside there. Those are the ones that, for me, have eliminated jet lag. Tomorrow I'm flying to New York, I'm getting there late sometime. I, I use those there. I'm going to be on Dr. Oz, which is why I'm going there. And you don't want to have jet lag when you're going to be on TV because no. you want to you be look, yourself. You can also look really jet lagged. <laughs> yeah. It's not a good look. No. So you could fly the three days early just to make sure you look good. I don't have right. three days. I don't want to play with my kids, right? So I, I wear these glasses religiously when I'm flying uh, uh, from west to east. And truly, I don't get jet lag anymore. 
but the blue blockers didn't cut it, so I had to go one. And if you don't have those ones... I do. They're the ones that when you wear them, you look like a super villain, right? Yeah, or like yeah. a Cyclops, kind of. Yeah. But, I mean, you see people wearing them on airplanes now because they're... In fact, we've measured within 15 minutes shifts in brain waves in people wearing that they're as yeah. junk light is like corn syrup yeah and uh, so that's important and for those little the flashy light things i got so tired of this my house had like electrical tape on everything so that same company makes these little dots that are that are die cut they either block it entirely but sometimes you need to see it they just right, filter out all the, the blue on, yeah. yeah they filter out the blue so it's just a dim red light and everything in my house has that and in my hotel room those stupid blinky green lights right above your bed. Oh, yeah. I always get up there and stick one on there because how can you sleep with every five seconds there's a bright green flash? Those things drive me nuts. And, and I thought I was just being no. high maintenance. Green they is a spectrum crazy. that disrupts mitochondrial function. It talks to something called melanopsin sensors in your eyes, which are driven by mitochondria. Then that talks to a part of your brain that isn't even where, where vision is processed. It goes straight to your timing system. Mm. So your brain's getting a, a little signal every five seconds. Hey, daytime. Daytime, oh God, and you wake so up feeling ridiculous. like a zombie. It, it's it's just science, and the Nobel Prize was awarded for circadian biology. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do these actually in bulletproof, and then I talked to my team, and they're like, Dave, like this is a very big difference from the supplements, the nootropics, and the coffee, and the protein bars, and all that. Um, let's not. So I actually started a separate company. I don't operate this. I mm -hmm. I funded it and got the IP uh, uh, organized, um, but I the company is called True Dark, and. I, I always wear these glasses when I'm indoors because I have my brain on at the end of the day. Um, and I just, I would say for everyone who stares at a phone, there's something that you can do that's free. I'm gonna show you right now. It'll take like half a second. Okay. So watch this. This is a normal iPhone. Uh, I wanna show you my calendar because you'll just, you'll, you'll cry if you see it. Yeah, no um, worries. All right, so what you normally do is your phone looks like this. It's yeah. just a normal, like I saw you wince when yeah, I did that. Yeah, yeah, okay. it's really harsh. So night shift is not on. Yeah. First thing I do, night shift is always on, no yeah. matter what. But here's what you can do with the disability uh, settings that are on here. So I have this set up. I can triple click, and I can reduce the white point, and all of a sudden it's not as bright. And oh I, yeah, interesting. And you triple click again. I turn on the red filter. Now it's like I'm wearing the red glasses, but I'm not. So you can stare at that phone in a dark room, and you're not going. It's not as good as wearing the glasses, but it cuts out probably 85% of the bad light. The settings are there, but they're not designed uh, into the the settings. You have to go in and basically do the visual uh, visual accessibility settings. We can link to. There's. Do you have a video? Of yeah, you doing I think this I have online? a video. Yeah, yeah, we'll link to that in the show notes because it's otherwise it's impossible to show people what yeah. we're doing. But I also have the accessibility shortcut set to do that dimming oh, you, thing. You know how to do that? Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, but I've never seen the red oh, filter. I'll turn before. it on for you. Yeah. But but what what ends up happening? Like okay, either we're crazy or we kick ass. Right, it's one of those things. If I can get five percent more energy by doing this, or my sleep quality. By the way, the the True Dark the red glasses, I double my number of hours of deep sleep when I wear it, when I measure it. If I do that, it works. So yes, I will get. I'll squeeze every drop out of every day. And if I have to wear glasses or you know not eat the deep fried cheesecake or whatever, I, it's a trade that I'm happy to make mm -hmm. because I love what I do. And if I hated my life, maybe <laughs> maybe I would just eat the cheesecake and stare at the screen. I, I don't know, but I don't I don't like how I feel that way. These little tweaks have made a lot of changes. Now, I'm not familiar, and I definitely haven't delved into the science of everything. You don't need to. Bulletproof yeah. otherwise. But I will say, things like the blue blockers, my wife can attest that when I put those things on, it's lights out. I mean, she can be reading with a light on, and if I've got the right, the, the Cyclops goggles on, yeah. it's over. And these little lights in your room that you think aren't making a big deal out of they it, matter. they are absolutely Ch ruining sleep. Check this out. A study came out in Japan. They looked at 800 people. The amount of light that comes in around your curtains in a normal city, not like with a bright light around it, just normal light leakage, causes a 63% increase in depression compared to sleeping in a dark room. That's it's crazy. It's that big of a deal. It messes with your, your body's sense of when and where you are. So the timing systems, so I'm a computer science guy. Every computer has a clock in it. And if the computer doesn't have a clock, no circuit knows what other circuits are doing and it doesn't work. So your body has, quadrillions of these little things all trying to figure out what time it is and they rely on a central clock and if that doesn't match it's no wonder that you don't run as well sure yeah it's like having the audio not sync to a video properly well said yeah, yeah. dave thank you very much man really right. appreciate your knowledge and uh and, Jordan, and the coffee all right i gotta offer people this check out my new book game changers 
Yeah, we'll link to it in the show notes. Awesome. And we when talked does it come out? December 4th. You okay. can order it right now online. And we're giving away $175,000 worth of cool stuff along with a book launch, including $100,000 in stem cell treatments. And Which just you some have crazy to get stuff. S- or in, on an island somewhere, no, I guess? No, you actually fly to uh, Doserre Medical in uh, Utah. Oh, okay. So you can get it in America. Yeah, in I fact, really I like just that. I just did the most extensive stem cell treatment that you can get. Uh, at least that's been done in in one time. This is a very high end thing, with uh, three physicians in four hours, with a half a liter of my bone marrow and all this crazy stuff. That's not what oh, we're gosh. giving away. Um, but we don't get any of your bone marrow with this no. contest. But you don't you don't you don't do, you don't do your own bar- bone marrow in this treatment anyway. What it is, you go in the one that we're giving away. Um, Ten people they go in and they use stem cells from you. And they will repair any joints, anything you've ever, any injury you've ever had. They can go in and reverse that, so there's no more pain. And there's another ten people are getting uh, cosmetic work as well as uh, reproductive organ restoration and rejuvenation. Well, I, all right, that's a whole, that's a whole <laughs> dinner topic, I think. Absolutely, I'm, but I'm, we're giving that away because yeah. it works. Wow. Well, yeah. That's very generous Game of you. Game changers is the book. And if you end up with a third leg or something because of that i have no responsibility they're going to call you jordan tripod Tripod. harbinger they they already do (laughs) (laughs) thank you thanks my friend